Hello everyone, what's happening? This is Forgo Nation, and today we're going to try to figure out which character you should pick from the 99 story exchange shop. Which of these characters, you know, should you pick Benny Morrow, Chin, Kinzu, Whip, Maxima, or K or K Dash, as you would call it? Uh, so that's what we're going to check out. I'm going to try to help you figure out who maybe you might want to go for. Uh, talk about maybe where they're good, maybe where they're not so good, and try to figure this all out. So we're going to go into match here, and we're going to go into championship. And this way we can actually show the skills, talk a little about them. You see that I have uh, five of them lined up, because that's all I can line up right now. So when you start out with Benny Morrow, Benny Morrow is actually a pretty interesting character. I see this guy a lot in live PvP. I see him quite a bit. Uh, he's a pretty decent character. He is a yellow attack. He does have the... Leadership that increases fighter yellow fighters by 25% and their power rate charge by power charge rate by 20% and HP by 20% now Leaderships are wonderful and all the PvE content and all the PvP content except for championship when it comes to real-time PvP Leaderships don't matter so for world event for the the chocolate mukai that's going on for the Shizuru event for all the content the epic quest uh, story modes, the leaderships are wonderful. Uh, in League, Arena, leaderships apply, but they don't apply in real-time PvP. So you should keep that in mind. If you're looking for a real-time PvP character, you don't really, you're not really going to care about any of these leaderships. So you look at his core effects, and you know power charge rate's really good. You go down here, he's got a little HP. But the thing that's interesting about this guy is he has an increased damage by 10% upon using. Uh, Raiji can probably pronounce that wrong with 50% HP or less and this gives him a 30% chance to remove the enemy's guard Which is terrific. So if you're Below 50% HP you have a 30% 30% chance when using this skill which is your first skill to remove their guard and It has an increased damage uh, dealt to a stunned enemy Which is good because he actually has a stun on his first skill and this is a skill that actually can uh, ignore the enemy's guard, but it's only a 30% chance and it is on a 13 second cooldown So that means he's gonna have about a 8 second a little over 8 second cooldown, which isn't bad. Uh, Benny Mar is actually Not too bad in real-time PvP um, The second skill, you know, he deals shock damage. So dot damage is always good You can do things like a tag you get some uh, shock damage on your character on the opponents, you can kind of run away, kill a little time, let that timer run out in real-time PvP if that's the kind of player you are. And then the third is just some uh, just some text. The striker is a stun. So if you need a striker, a good striker that does stuns, and this can be very useful in uh, epic quest against certain world bosses. You can stun the world bosses uh, maybe before they do a special attack, uh, ultimate move. And then you can go in for the kill. Uh, stuns can actually be very useful as far as strikers. So these are some things to think about with old Benny Morrow. Now I'm going to get out of here and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Kinzu. Or not Kinzu, but we're going to look at Chin here. Now Chin, Chin in my opinion is the worst of all of these characters. I think this guy is the worst. He is a yellow balance character. He does have the increased balance type fighters attack by 25%, HP by 15, decreased damage received, and guard stance. So when you're guarding, you're decreased damage by 15%. I mean, that's fine. It's not bad. You look at his core effects, you know, 5% damage decrease with guard. He's got a lot of decreased damage guard stuff, which is good, but it's nothing really terrific. Uh, he has a, you know, again, decreased damage with guard. Uh, he's, he's got a little of attack buff here. Nothing really too spectacular though. I mean, he's not, he's really, I think he's the worst character of all of these. Uh, he just doesn't do a whole lot. Even in his skills, like his active skills, uh, there's really not a lot going on. You just got a bunch of techs, uh, and that's really about it. His, his third skill decreases the target defenses by 6%, and this is going to go up. But And that's fine, you know, decreasing their defenses. That means you're going to be able to do more damage to them. But it's just... Yeah, the other characters I just think are better. Uh, his striker skill decreases target defense. So even as a striker, I just this is a striker skill that I would never use. Uh, period. I would never use this character ever. So yeah, unfortunately that's kind of where he stands, at least in my opinion. Now we're gonna take a look at uh, Kinzu here. Now Kinzu is a green attack, 
And his leadership is increased green element fighters attack by 25% and decreased damage received from yellow enemy fighter, uh, enemies by 25%. And again, in all PvE content, all the content in the game except for championship, these leaderships will apply. And his core effects. Now this guy's actually got some good core effects. He's got the 6% strike skill damage increase. He's got a little HP. Uh, he increases critical rate by 4% and power charge rate by 7.5% when HP is 50% or more. So as long as you have more than 50%, you're going to be increasing your power charge rate and uh, your critical rate, which means you're going to be doing more damage. And you're going to be able to get off your special skills a little bit faster. He's got the decreased damage received by 4%, increased HP recovery. He has a heal built into his kit, which is very good, by 22.5% when HP is 50% or less. And this actually gets better. Then he has increased critical rate by 5% and power charge rate by 10% when HP is 50% or more. And then he has decreased damage received by 5% and increased HP recovery by 30% when HP is 50% or less. In real-time PvP, and I've seen a few uh, Kinzus, he's actually a pretty decent character, especially with his skill sets. Uh, he can combo fairly well. Uh, he's got some... Actually, this is actually a pretty good character. A uh, nice overall pick, in my opinion, uh, because he does have a native heal. And in real-time PvP, and that's where I kind of focus a lot of these characters, um, a lot of the characters you face may not be that powerful. And these kind of effects might be really good. Uh, his skills, just some text, just some sex, but this is the good one. He has native super armor, so he has a little bit of a built-in heal. He has some super armor in his kit, which is very, very good. You put a, another card, like a super armor card on him, or, you know, if you have a fest set, uh, the fest set, you can throw it on him. Like, if you have this set right here, these cards right here, I mean, those give native super armor. Um, if you have, let's see here, if I can find one of these cards... No, no, that's gold game. We don't want that. I don't know what I'm thinking there. Let me see. I can find one. Let's find one of the Tekken cards. Tekken, 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 Tekken. Where are you at? There we are, right there. You put one of these cards on him to give him an extra super armor if you actually have this. These cards came in the Tekken collaboration, so it's a good chance you might not. But if you just have regular cards and you don't have any cards, you might want to consider this guy. Super Armor is very good, especially in real-time PvP. In PvE, he's going to do fine. You know, he's going to have some good attack stats. Uh, he's going to be a decent character. Uh, you know, maybe do some requirements with green, but yeah, not so much. I mean, could be useful. I mean, against Shizuru, you need a green element, but you need an element... A character that does dot damage, and he doesn't do any dot damage, so he really wouldn't be useful in something like that. But I really think in like uh, PvP, like in League, in the low-cost League, maybe in uh, against like World Event, uh, real-time PvP, this is actually a pretty decent character. Then we have Whip. Now Whip has a very good leadership. Increased defense fighters attack by 60%. And decrease defenses by 10%. So again, if leadership is something you're, you're worried about, or not worried about, but concerned about, something you want, maybe this is the character you want. She's going to increase all your defensive fighters. If you have Ash, Jin, Nameless will be coming in the future. Those are all defensive characters that are very powerful. And she can bump them up big time, but again, in all the game modes, except for real-time PvP, which is Championship. Uh, her core effects, you know, she gets power charge rate, which is really good. Uh, she gets increased damage by 18% on a critical hit. She decreases burn damage received, uh, which is really good. Uh, decreases burn damage other team members receive by 30%. This is all good stuff. I actually play Whip quite a bit, especially in real-time PvP. Uh, I've played her in regular PvP, in Arena, uh, and uh, she does all right. She's not a bad character for a cost 58. She's not too bad. She's a, definitely, a, I think, above average character, but not by much. Uh, say just by a little bit uh, her skills uh, this is something that makes her really good is her stun unfortunately the thing about it is you need to time that thing perfectly you got to time it really well but it has a low cooldown you're going to be able to use this thing if you have max skill cooldown almost every six and a half to seven seconds which is actually really good the second skill is just some text she shoots that gum and the third 
has a nice little recovery. It recovers all team members' HP by 2% upon using this skill. So when you use this skill, you're going to get a little bit of recovery. So she has a little bit of a heal. She has a stun. But the thing about her is she can be a little clunky to play. A little bit. Uh, sometimes she's doing a maneuver and she kind of just sits there and holsters her gun and you're just waiting around and you could get hit while doing that. Uh, I really find that she's decent in real-time PvP, but I think she's a lot better in PvE content, but that's just my personal opinion. And as a striker, just some text so as a striker, she's really not that great. And then we have Maxima. Maxima is a yellow element, and this guy's got a really wild leadership. Uh, increased attack by 55% when yellow element fighter's HP is higher than 60%. This is a good attack, a good leadership, if your HP is above 60%. Now, what a lot of players would do is they would have healing strikers and just keep healing their fighter. That way, that HP would stay above 60%. So, in PvE content, and uh, except for like, you know, in all the PvE content, this could be very, you know, a very useful leadership. Uh, in PvP content, not so much. Uh, not really so much, especially in Championship. And then you're going to get a crit rate by 11% if lower. So it's kind of a wacky leadership, and it's kind of a situational leadership, which isn't really that great. But his core effects are pretty interesting. He's got the grab skill increase. He has the power charge rate increase. I'm kind of, I know I'm kind of skipping along a little bit here. But he decreases damage received by 20% for 5 seconds when HP is 30% or less. And this is on a 60-second cooldown. That is a long, long cooldown. That's pretty much the duration of a championship fight. Uh, I really don't think this is going to be a character you're going to want to use in PvE. I have seen some Maximas in real-time PvP, but very few. I don't see a lot of them. He does have the 6% chance to gain Super Armor for 3 seconds uh, when attacked. And I believe this is going to go up. Let's we'll scroll down here. Here we go. Yeah, 20% chance to gain Super Armor for 3 seconds when attacked. So when he's attacked on a 20-second cooldown, he's going to have a 20% chance to gain Super Armor. That's good. But it's on a 20 second cooldown, so it's kind of eh. But if you put a good Super Armor card set on, you have Fest cards, then maybe he's someone, you know, to consider. He also does grab skills. However, the thing about Maxima is he's, he's, he's a bit slow. His, his animations are actually quite slow and easy to dodge. And that's kind of a thing that hurts him. Uh, at least when I faced him, he seemed easy to dodge. He gets this stun that actually will go up. And that's nice, but... You'll see when we do the skill previews or when we show the how they fight that he's just a bit slow. And then we have, and let me click off Maxima here and let me find, there we go, K. Now K is actually a really good character. He has a great leadership. He has an increased red element fighter attack by 50%. This is very good for all red fighters, whether defense, attack, balance, it doesn't matter. This is wonderful. And you take a look at his core effects. He has strike skill damage increase, which is very good for K because he has strike skills. 30% freeze duration decrease, 50% burn attack damage increase, which is really great because he does burn damage, dot damage, which again is something like Benny Morrow, only actually his burn damage is much better than Benny Morrow's. Uh, it's it's a, a lot better. When he does burn, you actually, you're going to see them, the health just go bye-bye. He deals burn damage equal to 70%. Of attack every one second for seven seconds upon landing an active skill, which is great. Deals burn damage equal to 10% of attack when attacking a burned enemy, and an additional burn damage equal to 10% of attack upon landing a critical hit. He's got a lot of burn. If he has a lot of critical hit, a lot of critical rate, he's gonna do even more burn damage. You look at his skills, just some text here. There's really nothing special except for the last one here. He's gonna get a nice little attack buff, which is really good. And then as far as his striker, he deals an additional burn damage, and this this is actually going to go up, I believe. I think it goes up 30%, I'm not really sure, but it's going to go up a little bit. And that's that, that could be useful for, say, if you're fighting uh, Shizuru and the Epic Quest, because burn damage pretty much can murder her, uh, which is great. So let's take a look at all these fighters, how they fight. So Benny Marl, so that's that skill that can ignore the guard. It's a pretty quick skill. The second skill, nice little backflip. And then the third skill. And this is actually a really good skill. I would, you know, sometimes I'd get caught in that sucker every once in a while. Uh, a bit annoying, actually. Um, but, well, crap. We need to get a little closer and we got to wait for the cooldown. 
But you see this skill knocks him up in the air. This skill can hit you while on the ground, which is really good. So when someone's on the ground, you can use it. I see a lot of Benny Morals in real-time PvP. And that skill just, maybe you can stun. And that's about it. Benny Morrow is a decent character. I think he's actually more suited for uh, real-time PvP or even PvP than he is for anything else. Uh, but, you know, for a low-cost character, that is, anyways. Now let's take a look at uh, Chin here. Now Chin, see so he's got a nice little hesitation. It's and the thing is, he's he has these little pauses in his animations where he could be interrupted. And if he gets interrupted, well, you're going to be doing the other person's going to be doing damage to you. And that's not a bad skill. A little roll and then he punches him up. That's pretty cool. It's not bad. And this isn't a bad skill. But you'll find a lot of people just dodge attacks like that. It's not super fast. The animations are kind of slow. I mean, the old drunken master does fight like a drunken master. I mean, that it's not bad, but eh. It's just, this is just this isn't a character you're going to see, guys. You're just not going to see him very much. Now for Kinzu. Now Kinzu, this guy is actually quite nice. Now watch his skills. He knocks him up in the air. He knocks him up in the air. And he knocks him up in the air. And he has that super armor. Plus this guy has that uh, heal in his uh, core effects. So the fact that he can knock characters up in the air, up in the air, up in the air is really good. I mean, look at that. Look at that. See what I'm talking about? You can just combo all of those skills all together. And we'll try to use a special and see if we can go can't go into a combo afterwards. Well, I would have if I had timed that right, but you can actually go into a combo after your special, which is wonderful. And that's why I say I think this is one of the better characters, easily, in my opinion. I just think Kenzie's got it going on. A whip. Now, Whip is a good character. Like I said, I play in real-time PvP. Uh, you know, the one skill does the stun, which is really good. But you'll find a lot of people can dodge that thing pretty easy. Uh, same with this skill here. She's got to do the Whip, and then she teleports over. If she gets the Whip and gets the hits in, she'll teleport over. And then you can do your stun. And then you can do your, your uh, shoot him on the ground technique. And we'll, we'll do it all from the beginning. You can do here. Boom. Boom, and then boom. And it works out really great, but the problem is if you got an opponent attacking you, you're and you're shooting that gun, you can't it's difficult to roll out of it and escape. You're pretty much rooted, and then you can take a lot of damage, which isn't good. It's not good. But she has a defensive character, so she does have some decent defensive stats. She can take a little bit, but against characters that deal burn damage, she can be useful. But I think Whip's a good character. I think she has a great leadership. Uh, that would probably be more of the reason I would want her than anything. But she is a decent character overall. Now let's take a look at K-Dash. Now K is really nice because he can... Look at this. He teleports when he does his dodging. So this can actually be very useful whenever you're dodging. He kicks him up in the air. Kick... Up in the air. And then up in the air. So he could actually probably go in his combos as well. He could probably combo all these characters. I haven't played with K very much uh, at all. Okay, so... There we go. Okay. So you could probably start off with the two, then the, maybe the three. The three first to get your attack. We'll just wait a second and see if we can get them cooldowns. Let's try that again. See what happens. Let's try this. Okay. Okay, so you want to start with the two first, then go into the three. I'm going to try that again. By the way, this is really cool that in uh, Championship you can actually test this stuff out. So we'll go two. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Then you can look at his ultimate skill here. Very cool. And he's got a great ultimate move. K is actually a very good character, and that burn damage can be very powerful. Very long animation here. Very long. Plenty of time to get his skills off cooldown. Look at that. His skills are ready to go. And he doesn't even have a card set on him. So, yeah. 
He's a really good character. Let's take Kay out of there. And let's find Maxima. Find old Maxima here. Wherever he's at. Where are you hiding now, Maxima? We need to find our 99s. Oh, I passed him up. I passed him up. 99, 99, 99, 99. 99. What the hell? Is he down at the bottom? Oh, there he is. Passed him right up. Thought it did. Okay, now let's take a look at him. Now this is what I mean by, he's a big bastard, isn't he? But this is what I mean by he's slow. Look at that. He brings his arm back. You see it coming a mile away and you can easily dodge that. That one, not so much. I mean, that's actually an okay skill, but still a bit slow. I mean, it's, I like the skill, but it just, he's pretty easy to dodge. And again, I just don't see him very much, but he does do grab skills. He can gain super armor from his core effects, and he will decrease damage received by a hell of a lot whenever he gets below 30%. So he can be a good character. I mean, if you get that stun, you could go straight into the two. I mean, I do like his skills. It's just, he's just a bit slow. So that's kind of the thing that hurts him in my book. I just don't think he's really going to be good for PvE or PvP. So, let's get out of here and give you my final thoughts on all these guys and gal. So, the way that I would rate these, it's really tough. Honestly, the top spots between K and Kenzu, in my opinion. You know, I think whips are close. Like, it, it just depends on how you look at things. If you're looking at leaderships, K and whip easily are the best, in my opinion. Maxima, he's kind of situational with his leadership. Uh, Chin, I think, is the worst character on here. Um, I think Benny Morrow is a great character for real-time PvP. Um, but I really feel like Kinzu is just better, in my opinion. Uh, and I really think Kay's actually very, very good. Uh, but I give Kinzu the edge because he does have a heal. He does have super armor, so I give him the edge over K. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of K fans are... They're not going to like that, but you can easily say that Kay's better because he has a lot of damn burn damage and he can teleport when he's dodging, which is a very valid argument. You know, if someone said, well, I'd rate Kay above Ken I, or above Kenzu, I'd, I think, yeah, well, you know, I, I can see that. I just, I think it's really close, very tough for me to say. So I think it's probably between K and Kenzu for number one, Whip for number two, and uh, probably, well, I think Whip and... Uh, Benny Morrow are probably pretty close, although I think Whip's a little bit better. Benny Morrow, man, he has his place. He, he he really is pretty good in PvP, but I think Chin's last, and I think Maxima's number five, but that's my opinion. So, Kenzu K, back and forth number one. I think Whip a little bit better than Benny Morrow, and then Benny Morrow being number three. And then Maxima, number four, and then Chin, and last. So let me know what you all think about uh, my observations of these characters. Let me know if you agree, disagree, and why you disagree or why you agree with my list. And I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one.